Hello, everybody. This is John with uh, Forward Talk again. And I uh, just uh, wanted to do this, probably going to be a quick little video, but I just wanted to give some life updates and then talk about, uh, excuse me, I've had some, uh, excuse me, I've had some sickness. I got some drainage, whatever. I think we'll make it through okay. Um uh, but I wanted to just uh, talk about some life updates and then um, and then talk about some uh, issues related to doctrine and scripture and the idea that not all scripture or not all doctrines have the same level of importance, that there is a hierarchy of doctrine, a hierarchy of theology uh, in the scriptures. <laughs> And that not everything uh, carries the same level of punishment, the same level of significance, uh, and that there are there is a hierarchy of theology, even a hierarchy of sin in Scripture. And so, uh, talking about that just to encourage us to to be able to prioritize theology and to make the main things count, or as uh, T.F. Tenney would say, uh, keep the main things, the main things. And uh, that really, really is important uh, in, in Scripture and in theology. I am sitting here today with one of my uh, fairly large collection of Starbucks mugs, I think like 150-something. This is my Louisiana mug. I wish the um, <laughs> I wish the handle was turned the other direction. Where I could hold it with my right hand, and uh, the Louisiana part would be uh, facing the screen, but unfortunately, that's not the case. But uh, sitting here with a little coffee this morning before I start my job, before I start work, and um, just wanted to to talk about some of these things because it's been weighing on my mind uh, lately, and I just wanted to share that with you guys. First of all, with uh, some life updates, I'm sure a number of you that watch this are going to be aware that I have recently, uh, last year, graduated with my uh, graduated with my BA in Biblical and Theological Studies from Regent University. That was an exciting milestone uh, for me. It took me. It took me longer than the normal four years to create or to complete this degree for a number of reasons. When I first started, I was only doing one class at a time, and then um, I I stopped for a while, and then uh, I picked back up and and started uh, started doing full time and finished it last year. And so I am now currently enrolled and about to start my second semester at Liberty University with an MA in biblical, I'm sorry, an MA in biblical languages. So I am uh, currently in a hermeneutics class, actually starting today, a hermeneutics class and uh, Greek two. And next semester, I will be starting uh, Hebrew one, and then I will be doing Greek, uh, Greek uh, syntax, I believe it is, or Greek grammar. And so, if you don't mind, please continue to pray for me as I uh, work my way through this uh, this degree in biblical languages. Pray that the Lord will help me uh, strengthen and sharpen my mind uh, to be able to ascertain and retain uh, the information that I'm learning. <clears throat> And I believe in God to do just that. If in any way, if in any way that uh, any of you would like to be able to support the work that we do, um, the work of uh, church planting, uh, education, uh, the videos that we do here at Forward Talk, if they have been a blessing to you, if you would consider supporting our ministry, you can do that financially. You can do that through uh, small reoccurring donations uh, at Patreon. Uh, 
dot com slash forward talk. You'll be able to look it up and find it. Also, you can do that with Cash App, and I will have those links in the description uh, of this uh, video and the show notes for this video. And uh, if you're interested in supporting supporting our ministry in any way, please feel free to do so. It would be greatly appreciated. Um, and so I'm looking forward to what uh, to what God is going to do and how he is going to help help me and um, in in my education. And I believe that is so very important. And if there are any young men that are watching right now um, that are interested in going into ministry, maybe a teenager, I have uh, I remember my passion and desire for ministry starting very, very young. And I was blessed to be in the, uh, I was blessed to be under the care and in the uh, home of a, of a, of an evangelist. Whenever I started preaching, and my dad, uh, my dad went to great lengths to uh, help me in beginning my ministry. But if if you're a young preacher, a young man that's looking to go into ministry, or you've already started ministry but you haven't uh, gone full time, and you're you're only serving. Uh, I say only as if that's insignificant. It's not at all. But you're you're serving locally in a church, uh, and maybe hoping to go full time one day, evangelizing or church planting or pastoring, whatever it may be that your ambitions are in ministry. I want to encourage you to consider formal education, uh, formal theological education um, in your journey in ministry. First of all, it's going to give you. It's going to give you the ability to uh, to handle the Word of God um, in a very, very good way. Not that you can't do that without formal education, but I can tell you that it will help you significantly in with in the efficiency with 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 which you are able to work through a text properly and equip you with with information and details. Um, in scripture that that you you just simply can't get otherwise. I thought I was very equipped in scripture whenever I started my my bachelor's program, and um, I didn't start till I was already in my forties, and I had been preaching for twenty years, um, and I I thought that I had a very good handle on the scripture and how to interpret the scripture and knowledge about the Bible itself, but the reality is, is that there was so much that I, that I had, didn't know that I needed to learn about uh, the approach to handling scripture. I had, I had a lot of the, the ideas in my head, but there's a lot of the, um, a lot of the practical stuff that I wasn't aware of, and the Bible is a glorious book, so I would, I would like to encourage any young preachers that are interested in going into ministry, do this. Not only will it help your understanding of scripture and your in your preaching, but also it will give you the opportunity to supplement your income. So, so that as you're traveling or even pastoring, if you have a graduate degree, uh, it will give you the ability to adjunct online to teach and to uh, help supplement your income. You can do that from anywhere. And so, uh, I think it's uh, a great idea for for young men and women uh, going into ministry, even if you don't do something that's connected directly to theology. My wife is in uh, the mental health field, and that's incredibly important and needed uh, in ministry. So even if you went into something like mental health or counseling or apologetics, there's a lot of different ministry-related fields that you could go into that would be beneficial to your ministry and to your income. And so I encourage that highly. So I discussed that I wanted to talk about the hierarchy of theology, the hierarchy of doctrine. And there, there's even a hierarchy of commandments and sins and uh, rewards and punishments that, that come as a result of those. And uh, there's there can sometimes be multiple multiple attitudes that people have toward uh, doctrine and theology and preaching 
that uh, that are unbiblical. We say things like, you know, there are no big sins and little sins. That you know, um, all sin is sin, and that and seems to imply oftentimes that it doesn't matter what sin you commit. That one sin is no different than the other, so you may as well, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you steal a piece of bubble gum um, from a local convenience store or you murder someone. You know, there's sin is sin. There's there's no big sins and little sins. Well, that that isn't true. Uh, simply isn't true. And we have a similar concept of you know theology and doctrine, and that is that that all truth is absolute. All doctrines are on the same level of importance. Everything is just as just as important as the next. And that you know uh, what you believe about eschatology is just as important as what you believe about the Godhead or the gospel or uh, every standard that we preach about about hemline or dress code or jewelry or whatever is just as important and significant as as uh, the new birth or anything else in scripture well, well th that isn't true as well there is a hierarchy of theology and doctrines and even commandments and, and rewards and punishments that are listed in scripture and the point of that is to say that uh, I think it's important that uh, we hold the level of importance on things, the same level of importance on things that Scripture does, and not, as we have often heard, a major on minors and minor on the majors, but keep the things uh, in their proper perspective the way they are presented in Scripture. Uh, the Apostle Paul the Apostle Paul says that in 1 Corinthians, uh, excuse me, in 1 Corinthians, that he delivered unto them as of uh, first importance the gospel, how that Christ died, buried, and was raised again on the third day. And so this was of first and primary importance, the gospel. It was of ultimate importance, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we can have a sense, oftentimes, a sense of ultimacy, that if it's not of ultimate importance, then it isn't of any importance at all. Well, that's not true, because if Paul delivered as a matter of first importance, a matter of of uh, top priority that Christ died, buried, and was raised again on the third day. Uh, if if only things of ultimacy mattered, then Paul wouldn't have dealt with with anything else other than the gospel. However, he he did deal with um, plenty of other issues, and, and I say other than the gospel, many of the other things that Paul dealt with had to do with how the gospel works out in our lives, but there were other issues that Paul dealt with that were not directly related to the gospel. There were things that Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians where he would say, one man observes this day, one man observes this day, another does this, another does this. There's differing opinions on certain issues, but he said, he would come to the conclusion to let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He said it's okay for people to hold two different practices concerning a particular issue. That it's okay for one man to observe and for another man not to observe. It's okay for one to eat and for another not to eat. That. Not everybody has to hold the same practice. Every man can be fully persuaded in his own mind. However, Paul did not have that idea toward the gospel. Paul says in Galatians 1 
that if any man come preaching any other gospel than that which I preached unto you, you let that person be anathema. You let them be accursed. And so Paul, Paul doesn't let people make up their own mind about the gospel. He doesn't let people say that the gospel is faith and grace and works and all kinds of other things related uh, to to living for God. He, you don't get to add all these other things to the gospel and still call it the gospel. Paul doesn't give that luxury. He says there's only one way to view and understand the gospel. And if you do contrary to that, uh, then you then you you are accursed. And so obviously, if Paul gives flexibility on certain issues, like observance of days and so forth and so on, if Paul gives flexibility on those issues, then they're not of first importance. Then they're not they're not essential. And it's not essential to uh, to hold a particular view or a particular practice on that issue. However, that, that flexibility is not given to the gospel. So the gospel is of first importance. And so it should be for us that things uh, uh, things that are not the gospel, things that are that are extensions and secondary and even tertiary issues that are related to the gospel should not carry the same level of importance uh, as the gospel itself. But too often we are incapable of making making those distinctions. If somebody doesn't dress our particular way or practice in our particular way, uh, then we then we uh, often will disfellowship them. We will often put them outside of our fellowship and graces, and we will uh, uh, we will call them compromisers, charismatics, so forth and so on. Well, brothers and sisters, I think we have to become very careful in how we treat our brothers and sisters on issues that are not related to the gospel. Even in the Old Testament, not every command, not every command was created equal. Uh, Jesus had the discussion with the religious leaders of, of his day and with religious people of his day, which is the first and the great commandment which is the highest, the most important commandment. And there was perhaps a debate over which one of the 613 commandments was the most important or the greatest. And Jesus says that the first and the greatest commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And so even in Jewish theology, there was a hierarchy of doctrine, a hierarchy of commandments. Not all commandments are created the same and with the same level of importance. So the doctrine of the oneness of God, the, the identity of Israel's God, was of first and primary importance. And so not everything, not everything carries the same level of significance. But just because something isn't at the level of the Shema, or just because something isn't at the same level as the gospel doesn't mean that those things are not important. The gospel was at first importance, but it wasn't the only thing important. The first commandment, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, is one Lord, was the greatest commandment, but it doesn't mean that there were no other great commandments yeah. or that there were no other important or valuable commandments. So, there's, there's a couple different ways to go wrong with theology and Scripture. One of the ways to go wrong with theology and Scripture is to say, if it's not of ultimate importance, then it's not important at all. That none of this stuff matters. None of the other stuff matters except for the gospel. Well, they do matter. Everything in Scripture matters. The, the Scripture is God's extremely abridged story of himself and what matters to him. So whatever makes it into Scripture is important enough to God that God inspired someone to put it in his word. And so just because something isn't of ultimate importance doesn't mean it doesn't have any importance. So that's one error. 
to think that, well, if it's not ultimate, then it doesn't matter at all. So we're not going to worry about this, that, or the other that's in Scripture. Well, that's a, that's a wrong way to think about it. You shouldn't consider things less than ultimate, less than of ultimate importance as if it has no importance. The other thing that you shouldn't do <clears throat> with Scripture, the other error to fall into is that everything is of the same importance. That, bless God, <clears throat> what color shirt you wear carries the same <clears throat> level of significance and value and important importance as the, the message of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Well, that's not true either. And we have to have the ability to separate out uh, the doctrines and the issues that are of ultimate, ultimate importance, the things that are of secondary importance. And I would like to... Uh, I would like to also say to uh, my friends that are pastoring that not everything that you teach to a congregation and that we teach to congregations, and I say this as a pastor, not everything has to be of, of um, ultimate significance in terms of our pastoral authority so that we shouldn't, we shouldn't and don't have to make everything a matter of obedience or disobedience, that everything doesn't have to be a matter of compliance or rebellion. So that like Paul in 1 Corinthians, he had difference, differences of practices within the, the church at Corinth. One, like I said earlier, observes, <clears throat> one abstains. One eats, one doesn't. So, so Paul doesn't lay down the law and say, bless God, we all have to be on the same page here. <clears throat> bless God, my conviction is what everybody in the church ought to be living and doing. No, Paul said, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. One of those two, uh, one of those on the opposite sides of those positions was doing it the way Paul, perhaps doing it the way Paul agreed with. The other one was doing it in a way Paul didn't agree with or didn't practice that particular issue. But Paul did not force uh, his practice, his conviction upon everyone in the congregation. There's just some things that, to the Apostle Paul, didn't rise to the to the level of conformity. And not everything has to rise to the level of conformity. Not everything has to, we don't have to conform on the same issue uh, to have unity. We don't have to have conformity to have unity. And so not every doctrine has to be a matter, matter of uh, pastoral authority in rebellion versus submission, it's because there is a hierarchy of theology. And I think we would save ourselves a lot of time if we, if we understood that as pastors, uh, to not make everything a matter of compliance and obedience. Uh, and if we had this revelation and understanding of what things were important, we could save a lot of unnecessary fights, a lot of unnecessary chaos and confusion within a local congregation. So let me just hit a couple things uh, more quickly before we um, before I finish this video. You know, not every sin had the same level of 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 importance, and not all consequences had the same uh, were of the same significance and importance. Um, in the Old Testament, there were some sins that required the death penalty, and others didn't. Obviously, you can't say that there's no big sin and little sin, because and the consequences of all sins are not the same, because some required death penalty, others did not. Some sacrifices only required, uh, sins only required this level of sacrifice, while other sins required this level of of sacrifice. Some sins in the Old Testament were abominations. Other sins in the Old Testament were not abominations. And so not all sins reached the same level of significance. In fact, when um, surrounding Jesus' crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection, which is of ultimate significance, uh, you know, Jesus said, the one who has delivered me unto you hath committed the greater sin. And so even for Jesus, there are some sins that are greater 
than other sins. Um, there is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, which I have a video on that. It's not what you think it is, but even for um, uh, what it was and the time that it was, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost was of, of greater significance than uh, other sins, because this sin, if you commit this one, then you shall not be forgiven in that world, uh, this world or the world to come. And so obviously you can't say, looking at that text, there's no big sins and little sins, that you may as well commit this one as the other one. Uh, no, because if you commit blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, it won't ever be forgiven, not in this world or the world to come. That's not true of other sins. And so there is a hierarchy, uh, even with like uh, fornication. Um, Paul says every sin that a, a man uh, commits, a person commits, is outside the body. But he that commits fornication sins against the body. Then you have a text saying that uh, that uh, there is a sin that is unto death and a sin that is not unto death. Now, whatever that's talking about, obviously there's a difference of significance in a sin that doesn't result in death and a sin that does. Now, whatever that death is, is not the point of, of the discussion today, only to say that there is a hierarchy of order, not only of theology, but of commandments and consequences and punishments. And uh, this is, uh, is is very a very important concept in Scripture. Jesus talks about the one who knew his Lord's will and didn't do it would be beaten with many stripes. Then you have the one, the servant who did not do his Lord's will and didn't do it because he didn't know that that person, that servant would be beaten with few stripes. So again, we can't say there's you know no big sin, a little sin, that all sin's the same, that sin is sin. Not true. Because there's a hierarchy of commandments, then there is a hierarchy of punishments and consequences as a result of breaking different levels and kinds of commandments. And so having this understanding of hierarchy of theology, hierarchy of doctrine, hierarchy of practice, sin, commandments, consequences, and results, um, I think uh, it's important that we understand these ideas. And as I quoted T.F. Tenney earlier, uh, having a knowledge of theology to the place that we make the main things the main things. And not say the other things are not important. They are important. But some things are not of ultimate importance. There are some things that we can have differences of opinions about. Doesn't mean that they're, that they're not important, that they're not worth talking about, that they're not worth discussing. Because any issue that's listed in Scripture is worth discussing. Any topic that's talked about in Scripture is worth discussing. There is nothing that is listed in Scripture that uh, is so insignificant that it's not worth discussing or talking about. Why would I say that? God, If God thought it was important enough to discuss in Scripture, it ought to be important enough to us to discuss and talk about. So eschatology is important. The doctrine of last things is important. Uh, um, issues surrounding clothing is important. Why? Scripture discusses it. Facial hair is important enough to talk about why. It's listed in Scripture. Uh, whatever is talked about in Scripture is of enough significance that we should talk about it. And so there are no unimportant topics in Scripture. Now, once you get outside of Scripture and you're you're talking about and dealing with things that sh that are not directly in Scripture, then then may maybe, yes, we can say, well, that's not even worth talking about. Why? Because God didn't include it in Scripture. Therefore, um, therefore, it doesn't rise to this level of significance that we should be fighting over it. And so, and so it it is important that we keep things in perspective, that we keep things in proper balance and not make every issue a gospel issue because they simply aren't. And uh, to give our brothers and sisters a liberty to practice differently than us in certain areas and still, and still I love and appreciate them as though they are full and complete brothers and sisters in Christ because they really, really are. And uh, 
So that's just basically what I had in my spirit today, what I had in my heart today to talk to you guys about. I love each and every one of you, and um, I want um, want you to know that. I want you to know that God has great plans and intentions for your life. Before I'm done with uh, this episode, I would like to uh, remind you of the books that I have for sale, and I will also have the links. Uh, I will put the links for these in the show notes of this episode as well. But um, my book from about 12 years ago, um, maybe a little bit longer than that now, Are You a Christian? Redefining Apostolic. I deal with a lot of these ideas um, that I just talked about in this episode. Some of those concepts are listed in there. Um, I think one of my favorite chapters in that book is on is on the conscience. Um, and uh, I think there's some great content in there that will be a blessing to you, especially if you're sorting through um, the issues of importance, the hierarchy of theology, and and maybe God's readjusting and shifting your perspective on some things. I believe that book would be very helpful to you. Also, uh, my book on divorce and remarriage, an introduction to divorce and remarriage, a theology of healing after heartbreak. If you have uh, gone through a divorce and have not yet remarried, I believe this book would be very helpful to you. If you've gone through a divorce and have already remarried, but for some reason you're struggling uh, with that decision, because perhaps of the way you were taught, perhaps you were taught that all divorce and all remarriage uh, is sinful. Um, and and even though you you did remarry, you did so uh, without full faith and confidence that perhaps that it was biblically permissible. You just couldn't live alone and you're still struggling with guilt. Um, I really recommend uh, this book to you. I think it will be a blessing to your life. I think it will be a blessing to your faith and your confidence in God. So if uh, if you're in a divorce or uh, divorced situation or remarriage situation um, and, and you're struggling with that, please give that book a read. And if you if you are not personally but a parent or a child or a friend or a coworker or a uh, someone you attend church with is in that situation, because I guarantee you all of us know somebody. Uh, that is in a in a divorced or divorced and remarried situation, and if they are struggling with that at, on any level, or would just like to understand the topic topic from a biblical perspective, then please take the opportunity uh, to to uh, get this book or to share it with them so that they can get it or buy it for them and give it to them as a gift. And. Um, uh, I have been blessed that both of these books have been used at the college level as textbooks and source material for uh, for uh, college courses, and um, and uh, they have been they have been used on a, at an academic level, and I thank God for that. It's uh, it's very um, exciting to know that something that you've written is being used at that level uh, in the kingdom of God, and so I'm, I'm thankful for that. So if you would like to uh, purchase either one of those books, I will have the links in Amazon. Once again, if you would like to support our work in ministry, uh, you can take the opportunity to do so with the giving links that I have, will pro have provided in the show notes. And until the next episode, thank you so much for taking the time to watch as we reverse the silence with Forward Talk. And I hope that this has been a blessing. God bless you in Jesus' name.